Good day. I'm Ken Manalili and I will be your moderator for the discussion of mass housing. The house is a building for human habitation. It has been our shelter against hail, rain, heat, and snow. It has been a symbol of stability, of safety, of comfort, and most especially, of family. The rich people and the middle class have created massive and impressive buildings that can provide specific luxuries aside from its basic functions. However, it's a different story for the mass public. Some people could not even afford to buy a basic house. So tonight, we from the Ateneo de Manila University Graduate School of Business in Clark shall discuss the possible problems and possible solutions for mass housing. To start off, here's a video of an interview with Mr. Amos Rivera Chief Administration Officer for Lupajo or Local Urban Poor and Housing Office for the City Government of Angeles City. My, my office is Lupajo. It stands for Local Urban Poor Affairs and Housing Office. It's basically an office under the office of the mayor wherein our mandate would be how to be able to help the formal sectors to disappear a decent enough work. Homeless from former settlers to landowners. The, the legal basis of this office is Republic Act 7279, otherwise known as the Urban Development and Housing Act of 1992, which basically speaks about authorizing all local government units to have their own socialized or mass housing program in their own locality. In terms of technical assistance, aside from negotiating, my office undertakes the entire process of putting into place all the necessary technical assistance, like what? Um, meeting or organizing the community, having them registered at the uh, Securities and Exchange Commission or HLURB, yes. um, documenting the list by, by uh, collectively and individually conducting a census and tagging operation, subdividing the properties. There are also some syndicates that are playing within Angeles City that are going to capitalize, capitalize on these uh, opportunities, so-called opportunities with them, and then hence the increase of population in Angeles City and increase in migration and increase in the number of former settlers that are living within the city right now. Whenever they seek assistance to the city, and then we will do our part, and then the landowner will do their part as well. But what frustrates me really is during the time when they cannot even sleep overnight because of the fear of them possibly being then injected. Once we awarded them the title, they suddenly decide to sell it and squat on another land. And then they would come back and say, I was forced to sell it because I had an emergency, my son was so sick, blah, blah, blah. And then suddenly they would ask to help them again. That constitutes a violation under RA 7279. Uh, which uh, prohibits them from selling their property for as long as they were entitled before to a government housing project. Pero on a personal skill naman, yung motivation ko dito, yung mga anak ko. I hope ma... Ewan ko kung kaya pwedeng banggitin to sa, sa documentation nyo. I would like talaga someday that my children will be proud of their dad na uh, somehow pag na lumaki na kasi yan kahit paano ma may maka-encounter kahit isa lang dun sa 18,000 families na, na salvage na namin na may land title na ngayon makwento lang na oh your your dad help us kaya kami ngayon hindi na kami squatters that's my personal motivation ever since people do not realize how lucky I am when my first son got sick uh, the doctor said to me, three days pa lang siya nun, that your son might not survive. So I went to the chapel and said, and prayed, 
If given the chance, let me see him for at least 10 days. And if you give me 10 days to see him, I will wholeheartedly uh, sacrifice myself in doing these things. Maraming talaga akong sakot dito. Okay. Hello, <laughs> okay lang. And 10 days, I'll survive. 19 days after na ICU, the doctor tapped me. Sabi niya, pwede ka naman ng scene eh. I'll survive na yung anak mo. And then, 8, eight years ago, 8 years old na yung anak ko. He's doing well. Great Chris siya sa Westfields. And for all we know, yun yung talagang parang benchmark why I'm here. You have to have a good mayor to help you make realize your your dreams. No matter what you mga urban poor, you have to have a passionate, compassionate land owner to make them realize na mayaman naman po kayo eh. Beta niyo na lang po ng mura yan. And then you have to discipline the settlers. You have to persuade them to remove their vices. May tongis yan, may wetting yan, may alak yan, may cigarette yan. For the record, may pera yung mga urban yun. Hindi lang nila alam kung saan nila dadalhin. Kasi nga, before na wala pa kami dito, wala naman clear-cut option to have their own plot. During the course of my meetings with the settlers, we integrate values information to them. It's not all about kasi the law which speaks about how to process the, the housing program the city. It's more of having to internalize to them the mindset that this is for the benefit of your children. If I inspire myself na uh, one day my children will be proud of me, more reason for you to motivate yourself because you'll be benefiting something for life. Well, based with what Mr. Amos Rivera said, mass housing is defined as providing a decent housing unit for our informal settlers some may be providing new houses through acquisition or some through relocating them through new sites. Well, this discussion is basically on a, lo a local government unit definition. This is based on Angle City, so it's merely a small discussion. Let's try to elevate this discussion towards a bigger scale, on a more national scale. So now, let's hear about mass housing in general uh, through the discussion of my colleagues. To start off, here's a definition of mass housing for the Philippines and a, a discussion of how to, do we acquire mass housing through different government uh, units here in the Philippines. Here's Mitch. So mass housing is defined as developing economic and socialized housing project which is in accordance with the minimum design standards of the Republic of the Philippines. It includes a process of bringing down the cost of housing by thorough negotiations among landowners, financing institutions, and end users or the beneficiaries of these projects. The beneficiaries of, the, of these mass housing projects should be screened very well to know if they truly really qualify to receive assistance or grants. The motivation or the purpose behind mass housing is the conviction that majority of the Filipinos will not be able to afford housing units unless there is a form of subsidy to bring down the cost of houses for them to be afforded by Filipinos. So how do we know who the beneficiaries of these mass housing projects are? We have different social classes, class A, B, C, D, until E. So at the bottom part of the pyramid, we have the class E. Um, wherein their income ranges from 8,000 pesos to 16,000 pesos. And housing development projects depend on the monthly income of the beneficiaries. So for example, their income ranges from 8,000 8, pesos to 16,000 pesos. So the approved amount of housing development for them would range from 400,000 pesos to 800,000 pesos. And for Class D, we have 17,000 pesos to 25,000 pesos as their monthly income and the approved house amount for them would range from 800,000 to 1.25 million pesos. And then for Class C, wherein their income ranges from 26,000 pesos to 50,000 pesos, the housing development for them would range from 1.25 million to 2.5 million. Class B, 51,000 pesos to 100,000 pesos 
the develop the housing development for them would range from 3 million to 5 million pesos. And finally, for our upper class or the class A market, wherein their income ranges from 100,000 pesos and above, the housing development for them would also amount to 5 million pesos and up. So, the question is, how can the Filipino beneficiaries obtain houses? We have different forms of getting home loan assistance or grants. We have organizations under the government, private agencies, and non-government organizations. So the first government organization that we have is the National Home Mortgage Finance Corporation or the NHMFC. NHMFC is the major government home mortgage institution. Their main function is to operate a viable secondary home mortgage market utilizing long-term funds principally provided by SSS, GSIS, and Home Developmental Mutual Fund. NHMFC is also mandated to develop a system that will attract private institutions to fund long-term housing mortgages. The second government organization that we have is the Home Development Mutual Fund or HDMF or also more known as the Pag-ibig Fund. In HDMF, membership is mandatory to employees. According to our research, it was an answer for a national savings program and, afford and an affordable shelter financing for Filipino workers. And the third government organization that we have is the Housing and Urban Development Coordinating Council or HUDC, which is the highest policy-making and coordinative body for urban and housing development and is currently headed by the Vice President of the Philippines, Mr. Jejomar Pinay. And the last government organization that we have is the National Housing Authority or the NHA, which is the sole government agency responsible for housing productions. The National Housing Authority was mandated to engage in housing production for low-income families. And other home loan assistance comes from private institutions, and non-government organizations. Thanks, Mitch. So basically, the government provides houses to its masses through its government units or agencies such as NHA, NHMFC, and HUDC. These provide houses through different programs that the mass market could afford their new houses. On the lighter side, Mitch also discussed that there are some non-government organizations that give mass housing to our uh, deserving citizens. These uh, non-government organizations provide grants to its beneficiaries for free. Example of these is Gawad Kalinga. So here's Connie to further discuss it. So Gawad Kalinga is now being implemented in almost 2,000 communities in the Philippines and other developing countries such as uh, Indonesia, Cambodia, and Papua New Guinea. It has become a concrete manifestation of the healing of relationships in the Philippines. Bridging the gap between the rich and the poor, government and the private sector, by simply bringing back what is uniquely Filipino, the spirit of Bayanihan. The willing sharing of any heavy load for the good of his fellow men. Driven by a strong commitment to faith, Chiki is able to bring out the hero in every person by giving him concrete opportunities to serve. Gawad Kalinga sparks hope and the dream for a poverty-free world. One family, one community, and one country at a time. So how does GK Housing work? GK raises funds by soliciting, then chooses a certain unutilized land, which they will convert into a small community. GK awards then qualified beneficiary free housing. Thanks, Connie, for discussing about the projects of Gawad Kalinga. Now, here's Jim to elaborate to us specific uh, provisions on the Philippine laws on specific standards of mass housing, Jim? Uh, BP 220 sets the standards and technical requirements established. Uh, it shall provide for environmental, ecolo ecology, hygiene, and cleanliness 
physical, cultural, and spiritual development, and public safety and may vary in each region, province, or city depending on the, the uh, availability of indigenous materials for building, construction, and other relevant factors. Now, this law also gives us features or standards on how or what uh, local housing should be. Like, uh, there are part particular provisions of this law which sets basic, ne basic needs of human settlements enumerated in descending order as follows. First, there should be water, movement and circulation. Uh, then, there should be storm drainage, solid and liquid waste disposal, then power, then par park and playground. So, this should be complied with in order to ensure that uh, the house local housing projects can be a healthy source, a uh, healthy source of living for Filipinos or for those who cannot, who can who are bracketed under the low income group. Okay, uh, with regards to physical suitability, it is said by the law that a potential site must have characteristics assuring healthful, safe, and environmentally sound community life. It shall be stable enough to accommodate foundation load without excessive site works. There should be critical areas, example, areas subject to flooding, landslide, and streets uh, must be avoided. Thanks, Jim. The Philippines have provided mass housing to its citizens. It has met with problems along the way and has tried to solve them one way or another. However, how about our international uh, contemporaries? Let's look at the U.S., for example. They have various mass housing projects that have given to their citizens. So to discuss how is mass housing in the U.S., here's Donald Clark for his opinion. Donald? Good afternoon. Um, mass housing is defined as a place to live, some place decent for each and every one, not just for the rich or the middle income. In the United States, everyone is afforded the opportunity to own their own home. It's based on one, the individual income and financial background. Um, there are several programs that, if available, which I will discuss that will go along. How to obtain mass housing assistance? Uh, by contacting the Urban and Development um, Administration, uh, simply like buying a car, you would do your uh, research, first decide where you want to live, decide on the house that you can afford, which there are many programs available to help you through the process. The different type of public housing available, such as housing for family, elderly, certain person with disability and supporting housing with assistant living for the elderly and disabled person. Uh, housing is available in some cities and towns. There is very small amount of public housing available for single individuals. To, to be eligible, you must live in that particular community and uh, 